What's up, YouTube? This is MathWiz97, and welcome to episode number 48 of my WWE 2K17 Universe Mode. And the road to Extreme Rules will continue. Last week, we crowned two number one contenders for the World Heavyweight Championship. Tonight, here in Anaheim, California, we kick things off with the man behind the shield, the former architect, Seth Rollins. And from what I've gathered, Seth Rollins is in a foul mood, and perhaps, perhaps the foulest mood that Seth Rollins has ever been in. And that's saying a lot, because Seth Rollins at WrestleMania finally closed the book on his rivalry with Dean Ambrose, putting him away in a 60-minute Ironman match, a match that ended up going into overtime, but it was Seth Rollins who stole the win with a last-second roll-up on Dean Ambrose. And, well, Dean Ambrose, after the match, took out Roman Reigns with the Dirty Deeds, unleashing his frustration. Well, Dean Ambrose has since been drafted to SmackDown, so Seth Rollins need worry himself no more with the lunatic fringe. So now Seth Rollins, he's on his own. Reigns and Ambrose, they're both on SmackDown. Seth Rollins can finally move on, but that's not what puts him in this foul mood. No, Seth Rollins is about to address why he's so pissed off. I have to apologize for Seth Rollins' language, folks. Well, that's a very bold claim by Seth Rollins, and I guess we'll have to wait. What is Triple H's response? Well, there you have it, folks. Triple H, it doesn't... Because that, that is very clearly not Triple H. It doesn't seem as though Triple H is going to give Seth Rollins the time of day. Now, I'm not... From what I gather, this is not a match that was scheduled for this evening, and I'm not entirely sure if Triple H sent Kalisto out here. I believe Kalisto is out here of his own accord. Of course, Kalisto recently drafted to Monday Night Raw as a part of the Lucha Dragons alongside Sin Cara. But Kalisto out here, from, from what I understand, this is an impromptu matchup being put together it will be Kalisto versus Seth Rollins to kick off this week's show. And from what I'm hearing in my head in my headpiece right now, Triple H didn't even leave his office. Triple H just he Triple H has given the word that this matchup is going that this matchup is going to go down, but Triple H, oh wait a minute, look at look at this Kalisto, Kalisto looking to catch Rollins off guard. 1 2 No, but Rollins able to reverse it. 1 no, kick out by Kalisto, and already near falls in this matchup. But Seth Rollins quickly regains his composure. Seems as though Seth Rollins is just going to have to take out his aggression on Kalisto tonight. Triple H is in the building, but it didn't seem as though Triple H was making any headway to the ring to address Seth Rollins. So I'm very curious to see what Seth's long-term response is going to be to that. As Seth Rollins right now just... Again, just using Kalisto as a way to vent his frustrations with the game Triple H. That's the thing, Triple H, we know that he is a long-standing grudge against the Shield, but Seth Rollins has already beaten him in a one-on-one -on -one matchup, so Triple H, instead of fighting Seth Rollins to try to keep him out of commission, it seems as though Triple H is just strong-arming him, using his, his corporate position to bully Seth Rollins. Like, 
Kalista now with a roll-up again on Seth Rollins. One, two, but Rollins able to kick out. And I mean, Seth Rollins, I, I, I don't think that Seth Rollins is necessarily in the wrong here. I, I think his claims are justified. Triple H's behavior is not professional, but at the same time, I don't think Seth Rollins' behavior is... Well, I don't think his behavior is quite professional either. As Kalisto, big time splash on Seth Rollins, gonna go for the pin again. Kalisto looking to quicken the pace in this matchup to, to gain the advantage early on, and so far, Kalisto is bringing the fight to Seth Rollins. And that is not an easy task, just ask Dean Ambrose. As, oh my God, what a counter though. Kalisto looking for a drop kick in the corner, but Seth Rollins swatted him out of the air like a fly. And you can see Seth Rollins is livid right now, folks. The fact that he is to face Kalisto tonight. I mean, Seth Rollins, he looks ready for a fight, but I don't, I don't think Kalisto is the opponent he was expecting. Seth Rollins, he... I mean, to be fair, I, I do think that Seth Rollins is deserving of a World Heavyweight Championship match. I'm a bit surprised that he was omitted from last week's proceedings. If anything, I would almost argue that Seth Rollins is more deserving of a world title match than than the four men who are involved, but that's 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 a bit of a bold claim to make. That's not to suggest that that AJ Styles or Randy Orton are undeserving challengers. But then part of part of Seth Rollins's reasoning for deserving that title match, you know, some of it was a bit of a stretch because you have to remember that Seth Rollins already had a world title shot back at Fastlane when he took on Ryback. So he talks about his victories over Dean Ambrose at Survivor Series at Night of Champions SummerSlam. And yeah, the, that's not untrue that he did score those victories, but I mean, he's already had a shot at the world title. So, I mean, bringing, bringing that up again is, I mean, it's sort of superfluous because it, it, it doesn't really matter to, to what's going on right now. But look at Kalisto. Kalisto, you have to think Kalisto's got a bit of an upper hand in this matchup because he doesn't have to worry about all of this. Massive springboard moonsault by Kalisto. And now into the cover. Does he have him one? Does he have him two? No, a kick out by Seth Rollins. You have to think Seth Rollins is distracted by, you know, these world title aspirations. Triple H just messing with him constantly. Look at Kalisto, though. Kalisto doesn't have to worry about any of that. Kalisto is just out here for the victory. This is a chance for Kalisto to prove himself, and he's doing so right now, looking for a 450 splash, but Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins dodges it at the last possible second. And now Seth Rollins, look at the power of Seth Rollins, power bomb, and into the pin, Kalisto down, could he be out? One, two, and now a kick out. Seth Rollins, very rarely does Seth Rollins have the size and strength advantage, but tonight against Kalisto, he could definitely utilize that to his advantage. As Seth Rollins could be looking for God's last gift, but he's not gonna get it. Kalisto roll up inside cradle, shoulders are down, referee out of position, two. And no, now Seth Rollins shifts the pressure, two. And it's Kalisto who kicks out. What a counter by Seth Rollins. And now Seth Rollins got him with the Skywalker. Shoulders are down, legs are hooked. Two, but Kalisto kicks out again. There's the wily Kalisto. Kalisto, he's had high profile matchups like this in the past. He's challenged at one point for the Intercontinental Championship for the tag team titles, but at the end of the day, Kalisto can't get the job done. He can put up a hell of a fight, but he has yet to show results. Tonight could be a chance for him to change that and he'll look at that. Rollins was looking for a suicide dive, but Kalisto able to block it. I was about to say that Seth Rollins seems as though it's gonna be business as usual for Kalisto, but look out. Kalisto the 450 splash. Hook of the leg on Seth Rollins. Do we have an upset? Two. No, not by a long shot, Seth says. Powering at it a count of two. But man, I have to say Kalisto is on point tonight. But the question is, can he put it to bed? Can he nail the finishing blow? As look at Kalisto, flying high over the top rope, launching himself. The human pinball Kalisto, just flying and darting around that ring. Seth Rollins went for the suicide dive, but he, you no, know, his risk did not pay off. Kalisto, 
His paid off in a massive way. And now look at Kalisto, springboard flog, springboard frog splash straight to the spine of Seth Rollins. And now the hook of the leg, one, two, but no, Seth Rollins kicks out again. But Kalisto is looking impressive, Kalisto. I mean, I think if there's a if there's a chance, a chance that Kalisto could win this matchup, it could be right now. Salida del Sol, no, counter by Rollins. Seth Rollins countered it into a power slam. And just like that, the, mo the momentum, the momentum shifts back in the corner of Seth Rollins as he takes Kalisto to the corner. He's looking for the buckle bomb. Kalisto's up there. Oh wait, counter, counter by Kalisto. Shoulders down, legs hooked. One, two. Seth Rollins has just been defeated. A huge upset by Kalisto. Rollins looking for the buckle bomb. Kalisto countered it with a hurricanrana. And just like that, Kalisto has defeated Seth Rollins in his Raw debut. What an upset victory this is for Kalisto. What a performance. And Seth Rollins has to be furious. But Kalisto, what a debut. And immediately, just like that, the stock not only of Kalisto, but of the Lucha Dragons is on the rise. And as you see earlier today, this is the World Heavyweight Champion Cesaro making his way into the building. Of course, Cesaro now the new World Heavyweight Champion, the leader in the locker room. As we now get set for tag team action, of course, the World Heavyweight Champion Cesaro, we saw him making his arrival. He will be competing in tonight's main event against one half of the former World Tag Team Champions, Finn Balor. But for right now, we got tag team action, and you wanna talk about Raw debuts. We're looking at another one right here in Jimmy and Jay, The Usos. Yes, The Usos are set for tag team action. And I mean, this could be the night. This could be the night where all of these new these new debutantes, this could be the big opportunity for for them to shake up Monday Night Raw. I mean, we saw Kalisto just defeat Seth Rollins. Could the Usos continue this trend? I guess we're gonna have to wait and see how this matchup plays out, but their opponents tonight are one of the four teams who competed for the WWE Tag Team titles at WrestleMania. And that is, of course, Bubba Ray and Devon, the Dudley Boys. And the Dudley Boys, they're, they have, you know, despite losing at WrestleMania, they have remained impressive. They scored a victory two weeks ago on the WWE draft by defeating the Ascension. And in fact, it was in that matchup because they won that matchup. That was how the Lucha Dragons were drafted to Monday Night Raw. So. It's interesting how the WWE draft works like that, because in a way, you know, you don't want to go in and lose a match for your brand, but at the same time, winning the match only gives you more competition to go up against, because you're bringing new people to your show. It was the Lucha Dragons and the Usos who were drafted to Monday Night Raw two weeks ago via the WWE draft. But now the question is, are those two teams perhaps going to climb the rankings to the top? to one day challenge the primetime players for the tag team titles. I guess we're gonna have to wait and see. This could be the chance for the Usos to start anew. I mean, the Usos, their time on SmackDown was less than stellar to, to say the least. The last time they had a shot at the tag team titles was when they took on the Ascension at Money in the Bank. And they had two opportunities, back-to-back pay-per-views, payback, and Money in the Bank. They had a chance to dethrone the Ascension as the tag team champions, but they were unsuccessful on both occasions. As a back body drop there from Bubba Ray Dudley. So the Usos, I mean, really even then, their, their win-loss record following their match with the Ascension, it hasn't been, it really hasn't been that impressive. But perhaps moving to the new brand, moving to Monday Night Raw could just be the move that revitalizes the Usos' career. 
I mean, if it's not that, then the Usos, it might not be... I mean, their stock, uh, their stock in the WWE has already plummeted. I mean, they could be on the chopping block if this move to Monday Night Raw doesn't, doesn't improve things for them. And right now, things are not looking too good for the Usos. The Dudley boys have got the upper hand. As Devon Dudley with a massive clothesline to the back of the skull. Oh, and now look at that, a cheap shot taking out the other Uso. And now a boot straight to the face. As it is just all Dudley boys right now. The, the Usos have not had much of a say in this matchup at all. As look at Devon. A massive maneuver there. Caught him with like a two-handed choke slam and a, wait a minute, now a cover. Two, but a kick out. And now just look at this, look at Devon, look at the aggressiveness, just raking the eyes. Not only is that aggressive, that's disrespectful, but then again, the Dudley boys, they're the veterans. So, I mean, the, you know, they've been around the block. They know what it takes to become tag team champions. And just because they didn't win the titles at WrestleMania doesn't discredit their history. And look at this, the Usos sizing things up, Ali Us. Beautiful double team maneuver, and now the tides are beginning to turn. The momentum is shifting into the corner of the Usos. And now it's the Dudley boys who, who take a back foot. A backwards step as off the ropes, into a hip toss, neck breaker, beautiful move by the Usos. And now a cover, one, two, but no, a kick out by Devon, and you see Bubba Ray just begging, crying out for a tag. But it's not gonna happen. Jey Uso has got the upper hand as he scales to the top rope. But Devon Dudley, Devon trying to crawl to safety, trying to get out of there. Or maybe it was just on instinct. I don't think he quite knows where he is. Oh wait, look out! Jey Uso took a little too much time pandering to the fans. Oh, but an ow. Now Jey Uso delivers a shot back. Look at that, diving corkscrew moonsault. Hook of the, hook of the leg, two. Oh my goodness, we almost had a victory right there. Devon tried to cut him down from that top rope, but Jay was able to strike back. And now Devon's in some trouble. He's in a world of trouble. Tag made to Jimmy Uso. Devon whipped off the ropes. Double hip toss, double elbow drop, and a double kip up. Isn't that impressive? And now Jimmy Uso trying to rally the crowd, trying to rally the Raw fans. As he ducks under. Oh, but a clothesline, a massive clothesline by Devon in that. That'll shut your lights out real quick. And now Devon Dudley lifting him up for some saving grace. And this could be the beginning of the end for the Usos as Devon tosses Jimmy into the corner. Tag made to Bubba Ray. And they're lining it up, folks. Vintage 3D, 3D. And it is all over for the Usos. Hook of the leg by Bubba Ray. Count to 1,000. One, two, three. As you saw Jey Uso trying to sneak in there to break up the pin, but Devon cut him down. And once you get hit with that 3D, it's lights out. There's no coming back from that. And again, the Dudley boys continue their impressive performance. I don't know. If you're looking for the next number one contenders for the tag team titles, I think the Dudley boys have got to hold that spot at the moment. I mean, they've beaten the Ascension. They just defeated the Usos. I really don't think there's any team currently on the roster in more impressive form than the Dudley boys. As you see backstage, there is Sin Cara. We saw his tag team partner Kalisto upset Seth Rollins earlier tonight. Sin Cara, not entirely, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute, that's Curtis Axel. Well, we saw Curtis Axel approach Jack Swagger on main event, and now it looks as though Curtis Axel looking to, looking to get in touch with Sin Cara. What does this mean for the Lucha Dragons? Are, is Curtis Axel trying to recruit Sin Cara? Well, the Outcasts, it seems as though their, their membership could continue to expand. What does that mean for the future of Monday Night Raw? Well, we'll have to wait and see. 
Right now, it's main event time. And what a main event do we have in store for you as it's one half of the former WWE Tag Team Champions, Finn Balor, taking on the new World Heavyweight Champion, Cesaro. Finn Balor, this is a huge opportunity for him tonight. Of course, at the WWE Draft, his tag team partner, Hideo Itami, was drafted to SmackDown. And that led to a one-on-one -on -one match between Balor and Itami, and it was, of course, Hideo Itami who defeated Finn Balor. So Finn Balor, after losing that matchup, he's got a bit of a chip on his shoulder. But, to be fair, now that he's no longer one half of the tag team champions, he can finally pursue his own singles career. And perhaps, perhaps those tag team titles have been holding him back. And the same could be said for Hideo. We knew that once those two dropped the tag team titles that they were not gonna challenge for you know, they were not going to use the rematch clause. Because at the end of the day, those two are single stars. The question now remains, how quickly can they ascend to the top? Finn Balor, if he wins this matchup tonight, well, I'd have to say that, you know, you talk about Seth Rollins asking for a title shot. How about Finn Balor? How would he factor into the mix? I don't know, but the, the main event of Monday Night Raw, the main event scene is certainly... It has certainly been shaken up after Dolph Ziggler's injury. And I I got I got to I got to admit I'm really looking forward to what what the future holds for for the for this this brand, this this title picture. A lot of new superstars coming over from SmackDown. That's just, that's just the the real beauty of the WWE draft is everything gets shaken up. We really get to start fresh. And now with guys like AJ Styles and Randy Orton stepping up to the plate at Extreme Rules. I mean, Cesaro, he's got a hell of a... He's got a hell of a roster of superstars to try to contend with. Just because Dolph Ziggler's out with an injury, that doesn't mean that Cesaro's gonna have an, an easy ride as the World Heavyweight Champion. But if there's anything that we know about Cesaro, he's a fighter. Do not forget the intestinal fortitude of this man, Cesaro. Back when he was the United States Champion, he held a weekly open challenge for several months. And he retained the title on every night, on every, in every match that he competed in, he walked out the victor. And now that he's the World Heavyweight Champion, I mean, honestly, I... I can't really think that Cesaro's attitude would change just because he's at the top of the mountain. If anything, I think that would give him all the more motivation to... to continue competing at his best as there you see the raw power advantage as the Swiss Superman cracks the neck he's not going to back down to Finn Balor but Finn Balor is not going to back down to Cesaro as these two men I mean just look at the intensity on the face of Finn Balor Finn Balor he knows that this is the opportunity of a lifetime right now he may have lost to Hideo Itami at the WWE draft but this is the ultimate chance for him to bounce back as Balor ducks behind now, but it's chain wrestling between these two men. I mean, honestly, you talk about the list of superstars who are currently who are currently at the top of the Raw card. You've got guys like AJ Styles, Samoa Joe. Guys like Cesaro and Finn Balor, I mean, you, you would definitely mention Finn Balor, Cesaro, AJ Styles, and Samoa Joe in the same breath in terms of the quality of their in-ring work, in terms of their overall skill. I mean, Finn Balor, he's a future world champion in the making. The question just is, how quickly can Finn Balor assemble the tools he needs to reach the top of the mountain? As he's able to dodge the attempted European uppercut by Cesaro, and that's a smart strategy. You do not want to get hit with too many of those. The uppercuts are Cesaro's specialty. As Balor's got him up, but Cesaro counters into a reverse DDT. And Cesaro now drops the knee to Finn Balor. As I said, the King of Swing, he's a fighter. I mean, Dolph Ziggler, you wanna, you th perhaps some people going into that match at WrestleMania, some people thought that Dolph Ziggler was easy pickings. That Cesaro simply chose to fight Dolph Ziggler because Ziggler was injured. But that was not the case, and even if you thought it was, Cesaro had a hell of a fight out of Dolph Ziggler at WrestleMania. 
as now he goes for the cover on Balor, but Balor able to kick out. And that's just the thing, that matchup was exhausting. How much fatigue is Cesaro still dealing with from that matchup? And even after that, you know, if anybody thought that, that Cesaro was a paper champion just because Ziggler was injured, I mean, Cesaro proved everybody wrong when he defeated Kevin Owens at the WWE Draft. He handed Kevin Owens his first pinfall loss in the WWE, and that is no small feat. We're talking about Kevin Owens, the man who broke the, undefeated, the Undertaker's undefeated streak at WrestleMania. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. As Cesaro from the top rope, massive clothesline to Finn Balor. And now Cesaro lifting him up for the deadlift gut wrench suplex. Another one of Cesaro's, Cesaro's specialties. As he hooks the leg on Finn Balor, one, two, but a kick out by Balor again. Cesaro starting to get a bit frustrated. Perhaps he was looking for a quick victory tonight. But he's not going to get that out of Finn Balor, not by a long shot. Is look at Cesaro. Massive suplex. And now Cesaro just rubbing his face into the mat. Followed it up with an elbow drop straight between the shoulder blades. And Cesaro is feeling it. Wait a minute. No. Counter by Balor. Perhaps Cesaro was looking for that trifecta of gut wrench suplexes, but he didn't get it. Finn Balor had it scouted. Oh, and look at that. Double knees to the face by Finn Balor. And Balor hooking the leg on Cesaro. One, two, but a kick out by the Swiss Superman. As you see Finn Balor getting a bit frustrated now. He knows he's getting closer. Closer and closer to a victory. As he went for the rolling elbow, but Cesaro able to block. And now Cesaro, Northern Light Suplex, bridging for the pit. No, wait. Oh, we saw this at WrestleMania. Cesaro busting out the Brain Buster. Beautiful combination. As Cesaro drags Balor away from the ropes to the center of the ring. I thought he was going to go for a pin, but no. Instead, the King is ready to swing. Around and around and around and around goes Finn Balor as Cesaro... Just swung Finn Balor into oblivion. This crowd is electric right now. Cesaro hooks the leg on Finn Balor. One, two, three, no. Close call, but no cigar. And we talked about how you could mention Finn Balor and Cesaro in the same breath as Samoa Joe and AJ Styles. Talk about this matchup right now. This is definitely, it feels a lot similar to the matchup we saw last week between Samoa Joe and AJ Styles. I mean, this crowd, this crowd, they support both both participants in this matchup. As you hear the crowd now chanting for Finn Balor as Balor lines up the shotgun drop kick. The back of Cesaro's head ricochets off the turnbuckle. One, got him two, got him three, no. At the tightest of 2.9, Cesaro just barely, just barely keeps himself alive. But now is the time for Balor to strike. He's got Cesaro reeling. As there's a knife edge chop. Now off the ropes. Finn Balor starting to heat up. Finn Balor starting to build the momentum. As Cesaro now whipped into the opposite corner. Finn Balor another knife edge chop. And he's going to look it up again. He's lining up the drop kick to the side of the skull. As Finn Balor, he's feeling it. This crowd is feeling it. Is Balor going to throw him into the corner again? Is he going to look to four-corner him? No, instead, Balor, with everything he can muster, placing Cesaro up top. He's going to take him to the high-rent district. And these two men are in no man's land right now. Finn Balor looking for a superplex. But Cesaro counters, and Balor takes a tumble, but so does Cesaro. Cesaro took a fall as well, but... Not nearly as destructive as Finn Balor. Finn Balor, he's in a bad, he's in bad shape as Cesaro lines him up for the Ricola bomb. And Cesaro, oh look at this! Look at the agility of Ce look at the agility of Cesaro as he caught Balor and drops him straight on his neck. We saw Cesaro bust that move out at WrestleMania. Hook of the leg on Balor. One, two, 
No, a kick out again by Balor. And that just goes to show you know, how much the preparation for that world title match at WrestleMania has changed Cesaro's everyday game plan. It seems as though some of the tricks he picked up for his match with Dolph Ziggler, he's continued to, he's decided to keep around his mainstays in his arsenal. But one thing that has always been a mainstay are those devastating European uppercuts, that one to the back of the skull. And Finn Balor, I mean, Balor's out right now. The uppercut from the middle rope, followed by the uppercut to the back of the skull. And now Cesaro lining up the trifecta. He nails the first, got him with the second. And here comes the third deadlift gut wrench suplex. Cesaro, he is unstoppable right now. As Cesaro hooks the leg, has he done enough? Two, not so fast, Finn Balor. As feisty as they come, he refuses to quit. And you gotta say, this is an impressive performance by Finn Balor. But right now, oh wait a minute. I was gonna say, Cesaro was in control, but Finn Balor able to counter with that jawbreaker. And now Balor channeling his second wind to the top rope. Finn Balor lining it up. Coup de grat, no. Cesaro able to dodge it. Cesaro just narrowly able to avoid the coup de gras. Balor dumped over the top rope with a massive clothesline. And here comes Cesaro. He's got a look in his eye. Cesaro, high risk move through the middle rope, a suicide dive. And Finn Balor now, well, any rally that Balor was looking to, was looking to put up, it just got squashed. As Cesaro has him in the center of the ring. Oh, he's gonna do it again. No, wait, counter. Balor able to reverse. Looked like Cesaro was perhaps attempting a, a gut wrench suplex, but no wait counter. Balor, I don't know what he was looking for, but Cesaro took him down with an arm drag. Military press into a European uppercut. Damn near took Balor's head clean off his shoulders with that one. As now Cesaro tosses him into the corner. Enter another European uppercut. Devastating strikes by Cesaro. Just when it looks like Finn Balor's starting to mount a comeback, Cesaro takes firm control and delivers another European uppercut. This time, I think Cesaro is gonna four-corner him. There's the third, and he gets it again. Finn Balor is just... I don't think Finn Balor's got anything left. It's all he can do just to get back to his feet. As Cesaro... Cesaro lining him up. This time it's a springboard. European uppercut, but it's no less devastating. No less impactful as Cesaro. He's gonna look for the trifecta again. Finn Balor, I mean, Finn Balor just, he's got nothing left. I think Finn Balor's out cold. Those uppercuts, those uppercuts, I mean, they, they just destroyed him. They scrambled his brains. But you see Cesaro exhausted. He can't capitalize off those gut wrench suplexes. But I think Cesaro now, I think Cesaro is looking to put the final nail in Balor's coffin, cracks the neck. Here it comes. Neutralizer. And that'll do it. Balor, he is out like a light. Count to 100. One, two, three. That's all it takes. And Cesaro. I mean, give all the credit in the world to Finn Balor. He really brought the fight to the world champion, but at the end of the day, it is Cesaro who comes out on top, and that is why he is your World Heavyweight Champion. Another impressive performance. Thank you all for joining me for this edition. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, don't call it a wrap just yet. That's AJ Styles. One of two number one contenders for Cesaro's world title. AJ Styles is making his presence felt tonight. And he is staring a hole through Cesaro as these two men approaching each other on the ramp. Look at this stare down, AJ Styles and Cesaro. Neither man is gonna back down here and these two know. These two know 
what's in front of them in Extreme Rules. I don't think these two are going to fight it out. Just sort of you know, getting in each other's face. Just giving each other a reminder that yes, I will be the man to win the world title at Extreme. Wait a minute, whoa! Where did Randy Orton come from? AJ Styles and Cesaro too busy on the ramp. RKO! And it's Randy Orton who will get the last laugh here tonight on Raw. Thank you for joining me. And until next time, keep on YouTubing.